Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a uh, disassembly that is for you of this little guy right here. This is an s um production, I believe the Beer Buster is the term. I don't actually know the uh, the, the final name on this guy. But anyways, a uh, very interesting little piece. Uh, so let's go on ahead and get this guy, uh, let's start by disassembling. Uh, that's... Let's end by disassembling too, right? Uh, I guess we end by assembling. Moving on. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take this guy apart. What we see here is uh, out of the box, we are very, very slightly favoring the show side. So it's good to know the action is good, though. There is maybe the faintest little bit of play, uh, which actually would explain why we're slightly favoring the show side. I bet at the end there won't be. But uh, I'm going to go on ahead and take out this pivot screw. This pivot screw is a free-spinning T10 uh, pivot. Is the screw part of it this side? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're going to do a flip-flop disassembly, come at it from the other side here. And then this back part is T8. Hey, nice. We got T8 here, and we got a T8 right here. And now, there we go. Beautiful. That is nice. Absolutely nice. So that was easy. Um, and that's exactly the kind of ease of use you want in the world. What we see here is a stainless, at least I assume it to be stainless steel washer that is embedded, uh, well, not embedded, but is included against the titanium there for long-term durability. We see a stop pin inside the blade that is not free-floating, so that'll stay, well, actually not in position, it'll stay... Uh, it will stay in position. It won't come out of position is what I meant to say. Guys, it's apparently it's been a long day and it's only like noon. Oof. Hey, it uh, doesn't bode well. But anyways, let's go on ahead. Just like a bad realtor. Oh, I'm sorry. No, they don't abode well. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's go on ahead and continue the cleanup here. I'm going to grab a Q-tip here and just dip it in some of the rubbing alcohol. And clean up here. And by the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using here today, uh, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools, which is now a full-featured website, so to speak, with links where you can get everything you'd like uh, that I have been using in my disassemblies. And there's the bottle that fell over that contains rub and alcohol. All right. This is disassembly two out of five that I have planned for today, so <laughs> let's see if I can get through these before my brain continues to turn into some flavor of mush or another. But at the same time, yeah. So anyways, this is interesting. Um, uh, One thing that is very clear to me is, and I, I, by the way, for what it's worth, have had early access to this particular pocket knife. Um, this guy was sent to me by a retailer, um, the main retailer for him, I gather, uh, a little bit ahead of time to get my uh, thoughts and opinions. And my very first question, of course, was like, is Pena involved in this? This is very Pena-like. I mean, it is. If you look at some of uh, Enrique's other work, uh, this feels a lot like it. Uh, and in fact, he's completely okay with it. The fact that the internals are very similar to some of the front flipper stuff he's done before. Great. You know what? I love seeing that kind of collaboration. People are open-minded to competition and understand that, you know, the quality of their work is going to sell their work and it doesn't require them to keep other people down to make that a thing, right? Love, love, love it. Okay, I'm reassembling now, using some 10-weight nano oil here. Applied a little bit to the inside of the pivot there, and just going ahead and drop this down onto there. Next step is going to be to put a little bit of lubrication both on the detent ball hole here, which will spread itself there, as well as a little bit in the bearing race. I'm just using the nano oil dispenser here to uh, do some rotation. Get everything smoothed up. Okay, next step is going to be to take the little stainless washer guy and I'm going to drop it onto the uh, bearing there. I could just leave it on there as I install this piece, but this way I know everything's in alignment. And one thing that's worth noting is that if we look at this washer, we can see that one side of it has some wear already. The other side of it, the other side of it does not. And so I want to install the side with the wear down onto the... Uh, onto the pivot. That way, you know, it, it continues to wear in as it had been. Okay, now we can put things back together. I'm going ahead and over lubricate slightly and put a little bit on the detent ball. Exxon Shabazz. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and slap the rest of this damn thing together, right? 
Okay, uh, we're going to start off with the pivot screw, which is your T10. I'm going to use a little bit of blue thread locker here. The good old-fashioned blue thread lock on a stick. And just slip it right into there. Easy peasy. You're going to see a little bit of wax. I um, actually uh, tried something a little different. I put a little bit of... Uh, Renaissance wax on the handle here, to just kind of because it came across as a very dry micarta first. I was curious how that looks, so but you'll see a little bit of that here and there. Uh, let's go on ahead and put a uh, put a screw in here, and we'll go ahead and put a screw there. And then I'll have to just adjust the tension of the pivot here. And depending on what goes on, I might actually unscrew and rescrew these back pivot, uh, these back screws here, just to make sure everything is sort of aligned properly once I've got the pivot in position. Okay, it's fighting me here. There we go. So what just happened there, and I've said this a billion times in disassemblies, but what I was feeling is that this was taking too much torque, right? And I could have just kept like... Argh! But I probably would have cross-threaded the things. So what I did instead is I just backed out, and then naturally, as you back out, You'll feel it kind of hop, and that's when it falls off the, 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 the thread. Hear it? Right there. It's fallen off the thread. That means it's at the you know start of the thread cycle, so to speak, and now I can put it in there, no problem. Okay, so where are we at tension-wise? There is no blade play. We are dead-centered. Well then, we're done. That was easy. Yeah, uh, the, the the centering is improved by properly adjusting the pivot. The, uh, the there is no play. These guys actually, I'll go in ahead and fully tighten them down, just because I know I'm good to go now. And there we go. Easy peasy, lemon freaking squeezy. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.